Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. And now, if you would, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and thank you and praise your name for the many blessings you shower upon us each day. Thank you, Father, for your love and your guidance and your concern for us. We praise your name, Lord, for who you are and for the way that you lead us and direct us. And I ask now that you would be with us as we continue our study of the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, just we open our hearts and our minds to you now and ask that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you would, please open your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we will read verses 11 through 16. So 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. Command and teach these things. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and the teaching. Uh, do not neglect the gifts which was given you through the prophetic message when the body of elders laid hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Last week I shared with you some comments on verse 11, but there's one, at least one more comment that I would like to mention about verse 11. It states, if you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister in Christ Jesus, brought up in the truth of the faith and good teachings that you have followed. This verse 11 may also re refer to verse 6, where Timothy reminded us of the instructions that he has given to the brothers and also reminding him that he has been doing this himself. And this then leads into the next instructions, which Paul follows here in these coming verses. And that Timothy telling him that he must also follow these instructions as well as instructing the brothers to do them. So Paul follows then in verse 12 by telling Timothy that he must not allow anyone to despise him and think less of him because of his youth. Now, why would Paul think the brothers or the community would think this about him, think that he is a youth? Well, perhaps there are several reasons. First, a youth in the Greek society was described as anyone up to the age of 40. Youth up to this age was eligible for military duty. And so how old was Timothy? Well, it is believed that Timothy was a teenager, and perhaps early teens, when he first became a believer and a helper to Paul in his ministry, and that was probably 15 years before the writing of this letter. Now, in, in verse, um, I believe it was verse uh, 14, he says something about when the elders laid hands on him, and I believe that's referring back to when he first became involved when he first accepted Christ and the elders laid hands on him and prayed for him and he received his commission then and his gifts by the, through the Holy Spirit. So then if he was, uh, if this was 15 years later, then maybe he was in his 30 to mid 30s. And so in the eyes of the society, he was considered a youth. Second, the church wanted their leaders to be men of maturity, probably thinking that anyone under the age of 50 had not yet reached that maturity stage because 
At that time, the church also said that bishops couldn't, anyone could not be a bishop unless they were at least 50. By then, they thought that the person would be past their youthful, youthful behavior and desires, thus considering, considered to have reached maturity. Paul instructed Timothy to live a life that will not allow others in the church to doubt his sincerity and faith or him having reached maturity, to live a life such that it would demonstrate he, that he was a mature leader. I believe that in our bringing up of youth in our church that we need to be, when we bring them up to be leaders, that we must provide sound teaching, not, with, not holding their youth against them. In order to do this, we must continue our own study and growing in Christ. So if we want the youth to become leaders, then we've got to demonstrate that to them and show them and teach them, and we have to live, live lives such that they will see it that way. So then Paul follows this admonition about being youth with instructions on how he, he can accomplish this, and this is also good advice for us to follow. He tells Timothy to set an example for believers in speech, in life, in love, and in purity. So let us look at each, each of these examples. In speech, I believe this means that our conduct must mirror our speech. What we say, our actions must reflect that. We must do what we say. Then in life, the same as speech, actions, our the way that we live our lives must reflect the character of Christ. We must be true to ourselves by doing what we say we will do. Live the life each day of the week that we profess to believe in as we're and worship on Sunday. Then in love, the agape kind of love that Paul is talking about here is the love for mankind that will not allow us to react adversely to others no matter what is said or done. We will always seek their good. That This kind of love will not allow you to be bitter, to be resentful, to be vengeful, to be hateful, and never allow you to refuse to forgive. This kind of love is not a feeling of the heart, but it's an act of the will. We determine that our will will be the same as Jesus Christ's will, and you know, Jesus always followed these characteristics. Is following Christ easy? No, not at all. But with Christ's help, this can be accomplished, and it is very rewarding. In purity, William Barclay has this to say about purity. It is the unconquerable allegiance to the standards of Christ. It was said in the, about the Christians in Bithynia that they are accustomed to bind themselves by an oath to commit neither theft nor robbery, nor adultery, never to break their word, never to deny a pledge that had been made when summons to answer for it. The Christian pledge is a life of purity. The Christian ought to be a standard of honor and honesty, of self-control and chastity, of discipline and consideration far above the standards of the world. The simple fact is that the world will never have any use for Christianity unless it can prove that it produces the best men and women. So this third characteristic of a Christian leader is the life lived on the standard of Jesus Christ. We must pattern our lives after Jesus Christ. And this, can this be said of us today? Are we practicing that? Does our, does our lives reflect that kind of character? Paul concludes this part of his instructions then with verse 13 through 16 where he says, Until I come, devote yourselves to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect the gifts which was given you through the prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. 
that being, I think, when he first accepted Christ some 15 years before Paul wrote this letter. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourselves and your hearers. So I believe <clears throat> that we should also devote ourselves to studying of the scriptures, to meditating on them, and to allowing God to use us by our being obedient and useful and using the spiritual gifts that God has given us. We should be diligent in the instructions of Paul because they are as relevant for us today as they were back then when Paul gave them to Timothy. We need to watch our lives and doctrines closely so that others will be led to Christ by watching the way that we live our life. Well, I have enjoyed sharing with you this morning, and if you have any comments or different ideas about these verses, please send them to the St. Paul's email address. I would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful time with the Lord, and may he continue to richly bless you. Go in peace.